Now, you may think that this is just a sort of a goofy illustration here. Uh, this is a photograph by uh, Alan Corcoran, uh, or the, it's taken from uh, a photograph uh, for, for promotional purposes for my, my record album. And then it was turned into this beautiful uh, cartoon type uh, image by my uh, good friends and, and Thelemic brethren in, uh, I believe it was Sweden. Uh, uh, please uh, forgive me for not having uh, your information at the top of my head, but it's turned into t-shirts and everything else. But it's also, I use it to illustrate something. Now this is a black and white uh, printout of a color version that I've done for a, uh, a Zoom presentation. But uh, I want you to see that In a way, it is that uh, that threefold. We forget that circle for a second. That threefold cross. It's a, like a hierophantic cross. If you look at the Rider Waite uh, tarot deck, the hierophant has a staff in his hand, and uh, it's uh, surmounted by this uh, threefold cross. And you see it in various Christian traditions it's called the Hierophantic Cross. So it's just a line, a horizontal line, or a vertical line and three horizontal lines uh, like that. And they're usually graduated, sort of like a Christmas tree. But anyway, this diagram has uh, those three uh, uh, horizontal lines, too. Uh, crossing a, a vertical line. And they're placed on the body. You might uh, consider those uh, those little white circles there. You might consider them chakras. Okay, as a matter of fact, you just go ahead and do consider them chakras. And you see there's, uh, there's arrows pointing to uh, the, the top three of those circles. And uh, those arrows all come from Iwas. And then the two circles below that, the arrows uh, uh, reach up to uh, the word Therian. And the two at the bottom there one at the navel and one at the root uh, chakra says Babylon. And then there's these horizontal lines. Now, uh, if you're projecting this on your own body, that top arrow, uh, you're actually drawing it across your own body from right to left. And the middle one from left to right, your left to right. And uh, the bottom one, your uh, right to left again. And there's names associated with that. Nuit, Rahu or Kuit, Hadit. Now I'm just showing you those, those landmarks. Okay. Today, we're just going to briefly uh, talk because it's not a long, it's an eternal subject. <laughs> so, so we may as well make it short. Uh, this is part of Liber 5, Vel Reguli. It, it's a Thelemic, particularly Thelemic. Uh, uh, pentagram ritual. Okay. Now there's uh, there's a star star ruby, which is uh, uh, also a thelemic pentagram ritual. But this is a different is a different one. Now when I say it's thelemic, I don't 
I'm not just meaning, well, I claim that I'm a Thelemite or I study Aleister Crowley, so I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Thelemite. Uh, what I mean by a Thelemic pentagram ritual is that it specifically utilizes the, the key landmark uh, elements, not like fire, air, earth, and water, but the uh, elements uh, that are particularly tweaked to represent the, the, the new Aeon of Formula uh, way of looking at things. It'll be easier for me to back us up and say, when we learn the pentagram ritual, the classic traditional pentagram ritual, uh, that is more or less uh, uh, comes out of a Kabbalistic, biblical, uh, Judeo-Christian uh, perspective. We deal with archangels. We say, Yodhe Vav He, Adonai He. Okay. Those are all uh, come out of the traditions of uh, of uh, Judeo. Uh, Christian Kabbalistic uh, uh, traditions. And actually that rubs some modern magicians uh, the wrong way. So why am I doing what Raphael, what, uh, you know, those, I don't resonate to that anymore. And right. Uh, but we learn it anyway uh, uh, to get the idea of what it is we're growing into what it is we're growing uh, uh, out of. And the formula still works. The formula of the age of Isis still works. The formula of the age of Osiris still works. But it works now a little bit better with the new formula. And that's all. You don't have to throw the, all the babies out with the, with the bathwater. But part of the, the new way of looking at things is in Thelema, we have our own uh, uh, universal and sometimes highly abstract deities of our own, uh, which uh, to a, a Thelemite, a practicing Thelemite, more accurately uh, reflect what we're trying to attune ourselves to in the new in the new aeon rather than uh, uh, the older formula so uh, as an example in the, in the classic uh, pentagram ritual we have an opening rituals are in modular parts and there's usually a an opening and a statement and something that uh, 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 qualifies as an oath or a statement. Uh, you, you start off a ritual by saying, I am here, I'm a me, and I'm here. You're announcing to the universe, hi, I'm Lon, and I consider myself uh, 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 microcosmic reflection of the of the macrocosm. Okay, all you spiritual forces in the universe, it's me, it's Lon. I'm here and I'm about ready to do th some magic here. So I'm declaring myself. It's it's uh, it's more than just a formal opening to a to a ceremony. It's you actually coming to terms with. Oh, I am a magical entity, and uh, here's my kind of qualifications. So in a pentagram ritual, you start off by going, uh, Thou art the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. To the ages. Amen. 
you are stating that you are a tree of life, that you are a microcosmic reflection of the big whatever it is, and whatever it is, it is that you are assuming that identity, and you're projecting it on your, your own body. Ata, and if you want to get the heart chakra, Ata, I was, or the name of your own holy guardian angel, Malku, Vigibura, there's Vig, there we go, Vigibura, Vigidula, which are the names of those sephira too, other names, and then your hands on your breasts, Amen. Ata, I was, Malkut, Vigibura, Vigidula, La Olam Aum. That's your statement. And you are forming a tree of life with the uh, Gebura and Gedula. You're affirming the, the, the center pillar and the pillar of severity and the pillar of mildness. I am a tree of life. Here I am. So watch out, you guys, because at least for the moment, I'm pretending I know who I am. Okay. Those are names in Hebrew. They have their own Hebrew uh, uh, alphanumeric uh, uh, meanings and significance. Uh, when you start to do the ritual, you 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 deal with uh, uh, the Tetragrammaton and Adonai and Ehie and and uh, Agla uh, as uh, your deity names in the quarters, and then you deal with uh, 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 classic Judeo Christian uh, uh, archangels: Raphael, Gabriel, Michael, Uriel. And uh, it works great. It's a great. It's a great ritual. It works. Okay. It hasn't gone obsolete. There's just another one. If you are starting to attune yourself uh, uh, with uh, more a solar identity than an, than an earthly identity, uh, there's something else. And there's a different way to do a pentagram ritual. And Crowley uh, uh, wrote a couple of them that made sense to him. And uh, uh, over the years, start to make sense <laughs> to others. And one of them is Liber V Vel Reguli. And we talked just a bit about this uh, yesterday. It's called the Ritual of the Mark of the Beast. Uh, which is enough to uh, to scare most of the Golden Dawn people away at the <laughs> when they first read it. But it's an incantation proper to invoke the energies of the Aeon of Horus, adopted for, or adapted for the daily use of the magician of whatever grade. Okay, it's not one of those things where. Oh, you have to wait until you are a zealotor to do that. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, you know, philosophers. No. No. Whenever. Whatever grade. No grade. Hey, learn it. Do it. What, what could it hurt? I'm not going to go through the whole ritual. But I am going to go through the, the first gesture. Okay. There's modules. And the first gesture is called the Oath of the Enchantment, which is called the Elevenfold Seal. Now, this is the equivalent of the Kabbalistic Cross. Kabbalistic Cross of the Pentagram Ritual. Ata, Iwas, Malkut, Gigibora, Vigudula, La Olam, Aum. It's quick. It's clean. Does everything it needs to do. But it looked at the tree of life 
from the point of view, truly, of the vertical columns of the tree of life. Crowley now obliges us to turn our attention to the horizontal lines. There's three of them. And they're really important ones. Because they, ho they hold uh, uh, together and counterbalance. Okay. The Oath of the Enchantment, which is called the Elevenfold Seal. And then he uses a strange word for the title, the animadversion toward the aeon. Now, animadversion is a comment. And in modern times, uh, it's uh, usually a comment of a critical nature, uh, a criticism. Uh, but ultimately, at its root, it, uh, uh, it is a comment toward. Now, I don't know if Crowley was just trying to show off his vocabulary. Uh, but it, it's an odd, odd word. And it's uh, usually printed out like this with a hierophantic cross with a circle at the top. Do you see that? It's a little, I'm reading from Magic of Alistair Crowley. So, let the magician, robed and armed as he may deem to be fit, probably won't want to bring a 45 sword, wand, whatever, armed as he may be fit, turn his face toll toward Bolaskan. Now that's Crowley's house, which is the house of the B666. And that's uh, 17 miles from Inverness, latitude 557.14 north, longitude 4.28 west. So instead of saying, turn east, you know, turn whichever uh, direction you have to turn to uh, uh, face those coordinates. Just to, around here, it's pretty much east, a little northeast. Let him strike the battery, the battery one. Okay, 11, 1, 3, 3, 3, 1. Now 11 is that magic number. That, uh, 11 is uh, uh, that number of who are all of us. That uh, it's the, the, magic, uh, the magic number of uh, magical expansion. Uh, and it's also the number of Abrahadabra. Okay, let him strike the battery of let him put the thumb of his right hand between its index and medius and make the gestures here following. Now, you, you may think that's just Crowley Crowley being uh, naughty. Hey, no, no. You see, the, you see, popes do this. This is not. This is a phallic mudra for sure. But it's not unique to Thelema. Okay, the next section is called the vertical component of the enchantment. Let him describe a circle about his head 
trying new eat. Now it doesn't say if it's a horizontal circle or a circle like that. Either way, it's going to work. But new eat. That's how I do it. Let him draw the thumb vertically downward and touch the root of his phallus, crying hadith. And the root of his phallus is not limiting this ritual to, to um, people possessed of that equipment. Okay. It's that general vicinity and that general uh, uh, center in a human being's body. So, Nuit Hadit. Let him, retracing the line, touch the center of his breast and call Rahur Kuit. Now, if you just use that section in your pentagram rituals. That'd be okay too. Use it modularly, okay? Nuit, hadit, rahur kuit. That's like saying, ata, aywas, malkut. Only here it's nuit, hadit, rahur kuit. Here are the horizontal components of the enchantment. I've spared no expense. Let him touch the center of his forehead, his mouth, and his larynx, and cry, I was. Then let him draw his thumb from right to left across the face at the level of the nostrils. So, center the forehead, mouth, larynx, iwas. Excuse me. I was. Okay, that's the top one. Let him touch his navel and the root of his phallus, crying Babylon. Oh, see, I skipped ahead, excuse me. Let him touch the center of his breast, his solar plexus. Center of his breast. Solar plexus, those two. Crying Therian. Then let him draw his thumb from left to right across his breast at the level of the sternum. So. Center of the breast. Solar plexus. Therian left to right across his breast. Let him touch his navel and the root of his phallus, crying Babylon. And let uh, him draw his thumb again from right to left across his abdomen at the level of the hips. Thus shall he formulate the sigil of the Grand Hierophant, but dependent from the circle. The circle. Okay. When you're doing it, it goes by so fast. I was. Therian. Rahur Kuit. Oh, excuse me, Babylon. 
Okay. Now there's a, pr a pronouncement. And this is where you actually say the magic words of the aeon. That's why this little section of this ritual is a complete ritual in itself. It is to get you attuned, pumped up, identified with the magic of the aeon. And then you say the magic words, just like in the comic books, Shazam! Okay. So after you do all of that, let the magician clasp his hands upon his wand. Now it tells us we've got a wand. His fingers and thumbs interlaced, crying, Lashtal. Remember, this is what we talked about yesterday. Lashtal, Thalima, Viav, Agape, Aum. Those are the magic words. All of them enumerate to 93. Uh, Lashtal being that special 93 uh, in that uh, it enumerates by the key number of the, of the tarot. The proclamation of the accomplishment. Then you again strike the battery of 353. Three. That's a different kind of 11. And say, Abrahadabra. That's a nice, clean little ritual in and of itself. You could do this ritual in combination or in uh, to... Uh, be the prelude to any other magical operation that you you might do, especially those that uh, uh, concern uh, your attunement with uh, the new Aeon. You could use it all by itself or just memorize it as a clean opening to this uh, 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 Libra uh, 5 bell. Reguli. So, now you can see how this diagram could be helpful to you as you memorize this. And I have posted it, a nice color version, right uh, on my uh, Facebook page today. And... Uh, you can feel free to put this up on your wall as you practice it. Anyway, that's it for today. We will see you tomorrow, hopefully. Continue to be good to yourself, be good to each other. Do what thou wilt, shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will. Abrahadabra.